how, how complicit is cinema with capitalism? Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. Oh, all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's not maybe the question, or can I turn the question around mm -hmm. and say, how is narrative cinema complicit yes. with capitalism? Because I see those two as being very intertwined. Um, capitalism thrives on narrative. You know, narrative, the great narcotic, mm -hmm. Brecht and everyone else talked about that. And we see it being proven true over and over again. Um, the Iraqi war has been made a great deal more palatable to a number of people because of the war narratives that are coming out. There's this spate of, you know, memoirs and diaries by returning service people. Mm -hmm you know, um, of their experience, and it's supposed to be like, you know, a sort of indicator of, you know, sort of Generation Y now, you know, what it does, and the whole war is being filtered through these personal stories, and the more that we focus on the personal stories, the less we have to deal with the bigger picture of what is really going on here. Mm -hmm. And so um, capitalism does this over and over and over again. It forces us to hermeticize the small individual story so that we never have to look at what's informing that story or the bigger picture. It wants us to see the individual as a very isolated unit. You decided from being an experimental filmmaker to make a feature film. It's almost like a narrative film. Well, right. Gravity and Grace. Right. You this because, huge Because, you know, experience. you sort of get sick of like nobody ever coming to see your films. Yeah. And you want to speak to more people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you don't want to live in complete obscurity forever and ever. And so, of course, you want to make a feature film. That was the ticket out mm -hmm. of the ghetto of the experimental film world, was to make a feature film. But it wasn't so easy, was it? You had to sort of go through all types of privation and sort of get money from here and there and bits and pieces. And you cobbled right. this thing together and you go from New York to New Zealand to make your film in Auckland. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was very stupid, really. Yeah. I mean, I saw one part of the puzzle that the way out of the ghetto was to make a feature film, but I didn't mm. see the other, which is that the feature film then needs to be about characters, and it needs yes. to be driven by a story. Yes. <laughs> it can't be just like a sort of overblown experimental film. You know, so I completely miscalculated the kind of film, I mean, I don't, I still stand by Gravity and Grace, mm -hmm. and I saw it again recently, and you know, there's a kind of cringe factor but it had a lot of good things going for it. Alan Brunton's performance is absolutely oh, it's incredible. Oh, so beautiful. It was and, astounding. Oh, and Jennifer Ludlam. Yes, yes. I mean, the whole New Zealand part of the film is mm. so beautiful. But you send up all these things in America, you know, when you meet the writer on the street corner and he's saying, you know, like, oh, my publisher, he's not supporting my work and blah, blah. And this whole the thing. The career monologue, yeah. Right, the, so Every the, conversation being yeah. a career monologue. So, and all these elements and of the woman teaching in the community college and teaching like literacy to illiterate people basically right. more or less. Yeah. Right. So there's all these moments, you know, there's all these connections that, that just don't sort of hang quite like a, a nice suit on a coat hanger. But there's lots of great stuff in there. You yeah, know. I know. Well, I mean, the thing mm. was, if I wanted it to be a successful kind of crossover film, mm -hmm. it has to be about one person and their story. Mm -hmm. There has to be a love interest, you know, that changes the story. Um, it has to take place in a sort of underground demimon milieu that's like a little bit cleaned up but feels dangerous. Yeah. There are all these elements that define the kind of class the classic crossover independent film, and I didn't have any of them. I mean, I just thought you could do what you want. You can't do what you want. Right. You know, you need to think about it. I mean, if you want to do what you want, then you're going to have to be an experimental filmmaker and resign yourself to the fact that like not a whole lot of people are going to see these films.